Hi Crossroads, it is Friday, April 17th. This is Phil to the Brim. And we are continuing our um, the word that the Lord has spoken over us that we are in a new season. And today I want to emphasize uh, Christian character. And uh, I'm, I'm continuing in my devotions in Philippians chapter 1, verse 9. And this I pray, that your love may abound more and more in real knowledge and in practical insight, so that you may learn to recognize and treasure what is excellent, and that you may be pure and blameless until the day of Christ, actually living lives that lead others away from sin, filled with the fruit of righteousness, which comes through Jesus Christ, to the glory and praise of God. As I was praying this morning, um, and the Lord was telling and kind of stirring my heart about us walking in Christ's character, He pinpointed an area of our life about the power of our word. You know, we talk about the power of His word, His promises, standing on His word. But what about the power of Lynn's word? Whatever your name is, that as you listen to this, the power of your word. Can people depend upon your word as you represent Christ? And he began to say, you know, challenge the people to filter through. Are you true to your word? You know, Jesus' teachings in um, the Sermon on the Mount in Matthew 5, 37, he has just said, you know, you don't make any vows, but you are to, or beware of vows, but let your yes be a yes and your no be a no. And uh, he was simplifying. Let, let's just simplify this, people. Let's um, let's m make sure that when you say yes, you're going to follow through. Um, Matthew five thirty seven. But let your statement be yes, yes, or no, no. Affirm yes or no. Affirm yes or no. Anything more than that can comes from the evil one. You know there was a power in a vow. There's a covenant in a vow, and so he was trying to prevent people from sinning and breaking vows. I want to challenge us that when we say yes to do something, even if it if it costs us, a lot of times I find people default on their yes, their promise, because it's going to cost them more than they anticipate. And a lot of times the Lord challenges us in that area to say, you know what, follow through on this, even though it costs you. Um, I want you to filter through your life and say, "Do am I true to my promises? When I say yes, do I follow through? Whether it be in time you give, ministry, you know, committing to pray for someone, um, giving financially, giving in other ways, whatever it may be, is your yes a yes? Is your no a no? And uh, because that's part of the challenge of walking in your new season to say you need to represent Christ as a believer in your word, in what you say you're going to do. This also connects to double mindedness. Um, the Lord is saying no more double mindedness over us. James, the book of James talks about us asking God for wisdom. And if you lack wisdom, pray. He's going to give you the wisdom. Many times I ask God for wisdom in so many things. I don't know what to do. And we are to do that. We should, we should ask God for wisdom. And when he gives it, we are to walk it out. We're not to say, oh, thank you, Lord, for the for Oh, but I'm going to go ahead and do it a different way. A lot of times... Uh, and even in James's day, that's what people did. Let me read to you what James says. James chapter 1, verse 6. For the one who doubts is like a billowing surge of the sea that is blown about and tossed by the wind. For such a person ought not to think or expect that he will receive anything at all from the Lord. In other words, double-mindedness, don't think it's going to all... How can it work out when you are flipping the cart on the Lord after he's given to you, imparted to you wisdom? For such a person ought not to think or expect that he will receive anything at all from the Lord, being a double-minded man, unstable and restless in all his ways and everything he thinks or feels. You know, we are a prophetic house. We uh, believe that the Lord speaks to us in very personal ways. We believe in the Word of God. We preach the Word of God. How the Lord loves to speak to His children. How many times do Christians listen to the Word of the Lord, ask for God to give them uh, direction, and then they don't follow through with it. And then they go out and do exactly what they want to do 
and they have doubts. God gives them the word. They doubt and therefore they become unstable in all of their ways. And then they blame God for not fulfilling his promise when they're the ones that detoured from what the Lord has spoken. I want to challenge us to when the Lord speaks to us to follow through. Typically what the Lord says is not in alignment a lot of times with what, with what the world is going to say about what you're supposed to do. And you have to walk it out in faith. We are supernatural people. And we walk it out not allowing doubt to come in, to creep in and cause us to be unstable in the path that the Lord has placed us on. This has to do with our Christian character, walking out the word of the Lord. It is challenging to do so because it goes against a lot of times our circumstances and what our circumstances dictate to us. I want to challenge us to be people of our word as we have the mind of Christ, as we are uh, uh, sacrificing, crucifying the flesh, being people of the spirit. We are to be people who are yes, be yes, or no, be a no. People who are not double-minded. We ask of the Lord. He, he readily and freely and in abundance gives us his wisdom, and then we walk it out. Let me challenge you to do those things, because we want to ha be people who do not have a double mind, which is connected to a person who has a d divided heart. Double-mindedness means you have a a divided heart. We want to be a person who has a heart after God and after his ways and we'll follow through with what he says for us to do as his children. We are obedient children to him. This is your new season, but do an inventory. We all need to do that. Do an inventory on your life and say, Lord, is there anything in my life where I'm double-minded? Is there anything in my life where I say yes and then don't follow through? Allow the Holy Spirit to expose, bring light to those things, and then say, you know, forgive me and help me because he wants to. He's strengthening you. You are that muscle Christian. It is a new season. I love you. God bless you.